हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस सेशन आई विल डिस्कस द प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन विच हैव बिन आस्ड इन सिविल सर्विसेज प्रिलियम्स एग्जामिनेशन दीज क्वेश्चन बिलोंग टू फिजिकल जोग्राफी एंड द फर्स्ट पोर्शन विच आई विल कवर हेयर इज क्लाइमेटोलॉजी द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच हैज बिन आस्ड इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री फ्रॉम क्लाइमेटोलॉजी पोर्शन इन प्रिलियम्स एग्जामिनेशन इज with reference to the earth's atmosphere which of the following statements are correct or is correct the first statement is the total amount of insulation received at the equator is roughly about 10 times of that received at the poles this statement is incorrect because at equate equator the average insulation is around 330 watt per meter square and in polar areas the average amount of insulation is around 70 watt per meter square why i am using the average word because there is seasonal variation in insulation in polar areas during summer season the polar areas receive relatively higher insulation means more than 100 watt per meter square whereas in winter season due to lack of sunlight the insulation is very low so if we take these average values the insulation in tropical or equatorial areas is around 4 to 5 times that of polar areas but in this statement the insulation is around 10 times so it is 10 times 10 times is much higher than 4 or 5 times so this is incorrect the correct statement will be the tropical areas the equatorial areas they receive around 4 to 5 times insulation which is received in polar areas the second statement is infrared rays constitute roughly 2/3 of insulation this statement is also incorrect according to experts the incoming solar radiation has high energy waves like x rays ultraviolet rays correct as well as low wavelength radiations like infrared rays uh, and visible light the share of infrared rays in incoming solar radiation is around 45 to 50% whereas share of high energy waves that is x rays and uv rays is around 10% correct so it's not uh, it's not a uh, 2/3 two 2/3 two means you know 66 and 0.6% uh, which is much higher than the actual values the actual share of infrared rays is around 45 to 50% so this is statement is also correct the third statement is infrared waves are largely absorbed by water vapor that is concentrated in lower atmosphere this statement is correct why because water vapor molecules like other greenhouse gases are capable of trapping the long wave radiations that is infrared rays correct so in the 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 long waves which are present in incoming solar radiation they are mostly trapped by the water vapor present in atmosphere that's why when atmosphere has higher amount of water vapor the incoming solar energy which reaches to the earth surface decreases and that's the situation in equatorial areas why in equatorial areas the surface of earth receives less insulation because of higher humidity because of cloud cover the humidity the moisture in the atmosphere that traps and reflects back a major portion of incoming solar radiation and that portion is basically concentrated in infrared ray segment so this statement is correct infrared waves are largely absorbed by water vapor that is concentrated in lower atmosphere the fourth statement infrared waves are a part of visible spectrum of electromagnetic waves of solar radiation this statement is again incorrect if you study if you look at the incoming solar radiation so incoming solar radiation has short waves 
that is you know x rays and uv rays the waves of medium wavelength so medium type of waves that is visible light the visible light has you know seven colors that is vibigure violet uh, blue the red i mean seven colors are present in that so and uh, then then there is long waves in long waves there are infra red rays so wavelength wise the wavelength of infrared rays is longer than visible light correct visible light is considered from you know violet till red color but the wavelength which is the the waves which have wavelength longer than red color they fall in which category infrared rays so infrared rays do not come in visible part of solar spectrum that's why fourth statement is incorrect okay so the answer of this question is c that is infrared rays are largely absorbed by water vapor molecules present in lower atmosphere now the second question is <coughs> The second question is consider the following statements. Statement 1 the temperature contrast between continents and oceans is greater during the summer than the winters. This statement is incorrect. Why this statement is incor incorrect? This statement is incorrect because the temperature contrast between continents and oceans is higher during the winter season. Why it is higher during winter season? Let me explain with example. <coughs> Imagine This is Africa, this is Siberia, this is your Pacific Ocean equator passes somewhat like this this is equator now over continental areas near equator the temperature variations the seasonal variations in temperature are very low because at equator sunlight intensity remains more or less same throughout the year temperature contrast is more pronounced in high latitude areas so here i will take the example of high latitude areas to explain why uh, temperature contrast between continent and ocean is higher during winter season. If you take Siberia into uh, you know example, in Siberia during summer season the temperature is relatively high because of continentality. So let us say temperature in the taiga region, the taiga region is basically the high latitude area. In taiga region the summer temperature is around 12 degree Celsius, 12 to 15 degree Celsius, that is the temperature of Taiga region in Siberia. Over ocean, because of you know high insulation as well as because of supply of warm water from tropical areas, again the temperature is around you know 10 degree Celsius. So, temperature contrast here 
in the between ocean and continent is very low that, that is just around 2 to 5 degree Celsius. Now during winter what happens? During winter due to continentality the temperature over Siberia during winter that goes below freezing point. It may be like minus 20, minus 30 degree Celsius. But temperature over ocean in high latitude areas remains relatively higher even during winter season due to maritime effect means ocean water has high specific heat and second thing there is continuous transport of heat from equator to polar area. This heat which is supplied by ocean currents that also keeps the temperature of water over in, 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 in ocean in high latitude areas relatively high. So, even in winter season the temperature of this area is relatively uh, uh, high that is you can say even 7 degree Celsius or 5 degree Celsius. So, you can see the temperature contrast between continent and ocean is relatively higher during which season? Winter season. Winter time continents become extremely cold in high latitude areas, but oceans remain relatively warm because of higher specific heat of water and second because of transport of heat from tropical areas to polar areas in the form of warm oceanic currents. Clear? And that is the reason isotherms are more irregular in high latitude areas during winter season. If you look at June isotherms and uh, January iso July isotherms and January isotherms, January isotherms are more irregular in northern hemisphere in comparison to that in July. Clear? So, why January isotherms are more irregular? Because of higher thermal contrast between continental surface and oceanic surface. Okay, friends, that is why first statement is incorrect. Now, the second statement, the second statement is the specific heat of water is more than that of land surface. This statement is correct. A specific heat means amount of heat which is needed to change the temperature of material by 1 degree Celsius. Water has higher specific heat means water requires higher amount of heat to change its temperature. That is why temperature changes are quite gradual in water than the continental rocks. So, this statement is correct, but this statement is not explanation of the, the, the first factor, okay? because the first fa factor is about summer season and this factor will be applicable in summer as well as winter season. So, second statement is correct, but first statement is incorrect and that is why the answer is D. D will be the correct answer for this question. Second statement is correct, first statement is incorrect. Okay, friends. Now, let us move to the third question. <coughs> the third question is <coughs> related to length of day and night. In the northern hemisphere, the longest day of the year normally occurs in. The first option is first half of the month of June, second is second half of the month of June, third is first half of the month of July and second half of month of July. The correct statement is second half of the month of June. Actually, on 21st June, Sun rays fall vertically over Tropic of Cancer and this is called as summer solstice. During summer solstice, sun is overhead at Tropic of Cancer that is 23 and half degree north latitude. Because sun is overhead at Tropic of ca Cancer and that is why the length of day is longer in the northern hemisphere and nights are longer in southern hemisphere if you compare with the, uh, the, the, the other half. So, let me explain with the diagram here. <coughs> so, it is like this imagine this is the earth, this is equator, this is tropic of cancer that is 23 and half degree north. This is tropic of Capricorn that is 23 and half degree south. 
Now on 21st June, sun is overhead at tropic of cancer, means sun rays fall vertically at tropic of cancer. This is north pole, this is south pole. Because sun is vertical at tropic of cancer, that is why in this phase like 21st June, the zone of light covers the earth surface like this. This is circle of illumination. Circle of illumination means the area of our surface which receives sunlight. So, sunlight is slightly shifted northward and that is why if you look at any latitude, let us take this latitude. So, larger portion of this latitude is under light and there is a smaller portion which is in darkness. If you move northward, take another latitude. As you move towards pole, the portion of any latitude which is under light gets larger and larger and area in darkness decreases. That means the length of day is increasing towards the pole on 21st June. Whereas in southern hemisphere you can see the area of any latitude under light is decreasing and area under darkness is increasing. That means on 21st June the nights get longer towards the pole in southern hemisphere, days get shorter towards the poles in the same hemisphere. Opposite is true for northern hemisphere. In northern hemisphere, the longest days are observed on 21st June. So, this is statement that 20, second option is correct one. So, this is the correct answer. Longest day of year normally occurs in which uh, 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 month? June. Okay. If there would have been, you know, December, that would ha uh, have also been true. Why? Because in December, we experience longest day in southern hemisphere and shortest day in northern hemisphere. So, 21st June longest day in northern hemisphere, shortest day in southern hemisphere, 22nd December longest day in southern hemisphere and longest night in northern hemisphere. Okay, friends. So, if we consider this statement for northern hemisphere, then this statement is, second statement is correct. So, there is no December option, that is why there is no scope of confusion here. Thank you.